Uh, welcome everybody to the webinar. Really excited to um, be able to introduce this product to some of you. Uh, many of you may have seen this already, but really wanted to be able to um, give you guys an introduction to the Energy Hub solution, how it can help you differentiate at the kitchen table, um, and how it provides you guys um, from a business perspective with long-term revenue opportunities and ability to go back to your customers to provide them uh, additional solutions. So my name is Jonathan Smith. I'm the regional sales manager here at Solar Edge. I manage the greater Bay Area and part of the, the Central Valley, Central Coast, working with all sorts of different installers on um, all sorts of different types of installations. And one of the, the great things about Solar Edge and the Energy Hub solution now is that Solar Edge was created by experts looking to really advance you know, the planet's well-being, provide a solution that actually makes a difference in our world, and by improving how we consume and produce energy all around us. Today, we're going to take a look at a few different ways that um, Solar Edge can differentiate at the kitchen table um, and provide future revenue streams for, for you and your business. And this is more than just solar, right? We're going beyond, beyond solar with the Energy Hub solution. Solar Edge is everywhere. Um, it's in your homes, it's in businesses and communities. We're really trying to transform how we live and work through energy production, uh, energy storage, e-mobility, um, and, and providing a suite of add-on features. SolarEdge is also literally all over the world in, in over 130 countries worldwide. Um, and constantly innovating through patents and gaining product awards for our products. And very specifically with the Energy Hub winning PV Magazine um, Innovation Award just recently. So today we're gonna to be focused on the Energy Hub inverter. This is an all encompassing inverter that is designed to not only manage and control the PV installation, but provide opportunities for your business um, to provide varied solutions to your homeowners, the most efficient inverter in the market. As we can see from the picture here, we've got a lot of different solutions that are encompassed by the Energy Hub inverter. We all know and love our solar solutions with uh, the solar edge optimizers, EV charging. In the future, we'll have generator control, obviously management of our grid, um, consumption metering, out on devices, and last but not least is energy storage. So when we're thinking about comparisons in, in the market of the kitchen table, there is no real comparison with SolarEdge. It's tough to compare apples to apples because SolarEdge has taken a view and a route to, be, to provide and become an all-in-one solution, uh, an inverter solution that brings your homeowner more into their energy consumption and production and provides you with insights into their uh, usage habits that you might not ordinarily have had. This is more than just a storage inverter. So this is not just a storage conversation. This is really focused around how do we differentiate and how do we provide you the ability to show more value at the kitchen table. Um, and we're going to talk about that as we go through today. If you do have questions as we go through today, please feel free to put them in the chat. Cameron Stewart will be manning uh, the chat box. Uh, for any technical questions and questions as we go. So as I've mentioned, this is more than just storage, right? Um, when we look at the attach rates for storage in, in, in most areas, um, even the best installers are, are only in the 20, 30% attach rate. That means that the majority of customers today are not really focused on energy storage in their buying purchases today. They are thinking about it in the long run though. So it's important to be able to put in the infrastructure today that allows you to go back um, and add future products. Really important in this is, is the RGM metering and consumption monitoring, which we'll talk a little bit about later. There's a built-in meter in the Energy Hub inverter that allows you to gather information and data on how the homeowner is using electricity, brings more integration into the, into the solar edge app, the cornerstone of all of this information. The Slimline CTE is a product coming from SolarEdge here in the next few months. CTE is traditionally one of the challenges with consumption meters. Split core CTEs would only fit in 40 to 50% of main service panels. 
Rogowski coils, uh, the rope CT can be tricky and are obviously more expensive. Um, we have a solar edge uh, slim CT coming out here in the next few months that will help to increase the attach rate. The smart EV charger. It's pre-configured to connect the smart EV charger with no additional components. We'll cover that a little bit later. Smart devices like the smart um, solar edge hot water heater controller. If you're in an area that has uh, resistive hot water heater starting to become very popular, which we're seeing in more and more jurisdictions. As jurisdictions um, make gas uh, less and less possible, some AHJs are actually banning new construction with gas, with natural gas. So uh, hot water heaters are now going to be resistive hot water heaters of some form. This will be able to manage and control that hot water heater to uh, maximize the self-consumption for that home and minimize the export to the grid. As we move to net metering 3.0, which we expect to be less preferable for our, for our customers, maximizing that self-consumption is gonna become increasingly uh, important. And then inline relays and switches uh, to manage bigger devices like AC units, well pumps, pool pumps and the like are also new products that are coming. And, not, and, and last but not, not least, of course, is battery ready. So as you can see here, we've got an ability to provide a roadmap to your homeowners, uh, an ability to differentiate uh, in the product that you're offering to those customers. The Energy Hub Inverter really gives homeowners more of what they want. What we've seen is that 74% of homeowners say they're interested in a battery. Now, I earlier said that Often the attach rate for energy storage is around the 20% range. So there's a big gap between the homeowners that are interested and the homeowners, homeowners that are actually putting, pulling the trigger today. That means that we need to put in a platform that is future ready for homeowners needs as they change in the future. What they buy today needs to be ready for what they're going to buy tomorrow. So the energy hub inverter fits perfectly into that. 20% of US drivers say the next vehicle will be an electric vehicle. That's going to vary from region to region. Some regions are gonna have much higher adoption of electric vehicles and some lower. But as it stands with the future of electric vehicles, we're seeing very large adoption from, um, from EV, uh, from car manufacturers and also from homeowners. Here's some examples of what we're seeing from, um, from electric vehicle owners. 80% of EV charging is done at home almost always overnight or while a car is parked during the workday. This is a perfect example of the, the, the need to prioritize electric vehicle charging in the home and to integrate that into your solar installation. 70% of drivers said they're interested in getting an electric car and 27% said they would consider one for their next car. We're, we're also seeing car manufacturers starting to prioritize this. GM just announced that by 2035, all of, their electric, all of their new vehicles will be electric vehicles. What that's really gonna do is it's gonna remove the regionality from electric vehicles. We see it in a lot of the coastal cities, uh, the greater Bay Area, LA, San Diego, et cetera. But what this is gonna do is drive, up, uh, drive adoption from customers that ordinarily might not have thought of an electric vehicle. So when we think about the life cycle of this um, solution, this is a 20, 25 year solution for these homeowners, at some stage during that 25 year period, that homeowner is going to get an electric vehicle. It's a guarantee at this stage. So it's important to put the infrastructure in place on the front end that allows you to go back to those customers to provide them additional solutions in the future. SolarEdge not only believes in this from a product perspective with our customers, but as many of you may know, we actually have an EV drivetrain portion of our business, and SolarEdge was recently selected to provide the EV powertrain and battery for the Fiat e Ducato um, light delivery vehicle in Europe. This is a huge stamp of approval from, uh, I think, it's the second largest uh, vehicle manufacturer in the world, and really exemplifies the drive from SolarEdge itself to diversify into these markets and the value of these markets as we, as we start to grow. And that's a clear indication and, and, and signal as to why we, we value the EV uh, charge on its own as well.
you really cannot compare apples to apples when it comes to the SolarEdge EV charger. It's the only EV charger that can be powered directly by solar. This is a full 40 amp charger, can charge up to 9.6 kilowatts. What that really means is that, that most standard level two chargers are a 32 amp charger. SolarEdge can go up to 40 amps. If you're restricted from your back because of back feed by the utility, and you need to land it on a smaller breaker and charge at 32 amps, you can actually get an additional eight amps of charging directly from your solar in solar boost mode. We're differentiated from up by our warranty as well with an industry leading five year warranty. It is indoor and outdoor rated. Um, what we're seeing is that um, ho some homeowners want to have these devices in their, in their garage and some of them have, want to have them on the exterior of the home. So we are rated indoor and outdoor. Full charging control, everything is controlled and managed in the My Solar Edge app. Um, there are LEDs on the EV charger that indicate charging status um, or potentially any error codes that you might have. And the supported communication interface would be Wi Fi, which is built in. So that would communicate directly with the inverter, Ethernet, RS45, or cellular option as well. So when you're connecting the EV charger directly to your energy hub inverter, you could just run a communication RS-45 cable um, directly to that inverter. The interesting piece about this is you now have solar and an EV charger on a single breaker. That's one single breaker for both devices, uh, reducing some of the requirements for main panel upgrades, reducing some of the requirements and, and challenges that we have when fitting multiple breakers into a main service panel when as we know, homeowners sub panels and main service panels are already very busy and very full. So all of those breaker spaces are extremely valuable. When it's connected directly to the inverter, you can also get the solar boost mode that I mentioned and, and all the communication happens much more rapidly. It can be installed as a standalone product though. So if the customer doesn't have a, um, uh, an energy hub inverter or doesn't even have solar, but is interested in, in EV charging, you can certainly install this on its own, or if you cannot install it and connect it to the inverter because of location, you can install it and connect it um, into a standard uh, dryer style um, outlet. You know, so when we're thinking about the homeowner benefits, and, and what makes this different at the kitchen table, right? And how do we differentiate this solution versus other solutions that you may see? It's the only inverter in the market that can be installed in conjunction with their solar installation. All of your scheduling is done through the same monitoring app. So what we really wanna try and do is focus customers' attention on their, their production, their consumption, and how they're charging their electric vehicle in the same platform. That doesn't need to be three different applications. We don't need a uh, a smart consumption metering device, a solar monitoring device, and an EV charger. There's no need to have three applications. It can all be done in the same app. What's really interesting with the Energy Hub solution as we're seeing these go out into the wild is that installers are starting to lead with this as the first choice. What, we, what we're able to do is create a baseline solution for homeowners that, as I said earlier, differentiates you at the kitchen table and provides your solution unlike any others for your that your customer is reviewing. So when they're comparing solutions between your Solar Edge Energy Hub solution and something else, there's a clear differentiation between what you're providing and what um, other solutions are providing. You provide your pathway to go back to these customers in the future um, knowing that if they change their mind, if they change what their habits are and want to add energy storage, want to add an EV charger, they have the infrastructure that uh, built in on the front end that's gonna allow them to do that. Really importantly though, it creates customer stickiness. When they want that EV charger, it's you they're gonna come back to for that add-on. When they want energy storage, it's you they're gonna come back to. And if they want to add smart devices in the future, again, it's you that they're gonna come back to because you put in their, their solution. I also think there's a great negotiation tool within this. You're able to provide a, uh, a premium product up front, and in negotiations, if, if, um, if customers are pushing you for a price discount, it enables you to pull something out 
and, and illustrate the value of the product in that discussion. Demand is really surging for all energy service products, right? Energy storage um, interest is very high, extremely high. Most customers want to talk about energy storage at, at their, their, um, their consultation. They want to understand what the solution is, even if they're not going to purchase it today. If they're not going to purchase it today, they want to know that when they do decide to add energy storage in the future, that they have the right infrastructure in place. The other piece as well is that when you add energy storage to your quote, that your close rate tends to be higher as well. Consumer confidence is higher when this is integrated in the front end than it is if it's an add-on solution when the customer asks questions at a later date. You can see that you know, north of 20% of customers are interested in EV charging, smart home devices, energy assessments, energy efficiency upgrades, really key in all of this is providing the right template and the right baseline solution on the front end. So we've talked about the products and solutions that you can provide to a homeowner that help differentiate you at the kitchen table. There's one key linchpin to all of this and that's consumption monitoring. Consumption monitoring and consumption data is critical in understanding how customers usage is changing and also providing them that information as well. All energy hub inverters come built in with a consumption meter, making it easier for installation. You don't have to add on additional devices and boxes either in the main service panel or outside of the inverter. You can run your CTs into your main service panel with currently split core CTs or Rogowski coils. And that data is automatically updated into their, into their monitoring portal. There's a few really big key points in this. We've all experienced the net metering, true up bill um, concerns that homeowners have at the end of the year. Providing customers with more data on how they're using electricity, it really helps them understand what they're doing and how they're using power and make to make changes uh, before they get their bill at the end of the year. Maybe that change is to change the way they're using electricity and the way they're using energy, or maybe it's actually to um, maybe it's actually to think about um, adding more solar now, right? Understanding that the usage has gone up for whatever reason, they added a pool, a hot tub, relatives have moved in. Um, that consumption data will allow them to reach out um, to you. Pulling that consumption data from the Solar Edge monitoring platform will also allow you as an installer to be more strategic in how you approach your customers. Understanding when their usage goes up is critical in, in finding the right path and timing for uh, when to upgrade them. You can pull a report from the SolarEdge monitoring portal that will show you the um, consumption information and how it's increased. That will allow you to go back to that customer at the right time. Maybe you don't want to tell them that the, you're watching their, their production consumption data, but you could call for a check-in and know that this is the right time to add something else. Maybe it's the right time to add an EV charger or another two or three kilowatts of, of solar. Um, um, or maybe it's time to add energy storage. The power is really in that, in that data for both you as installers or for the homeowner to be able to manage how they use energy and allows you to be much more strategic in how you go back to those customers. Lastly is, is about positive reviews and referrals and fewer service calls to manage these, these, in, these installations out in the field. Happier customers are much more likely to refer their friends. Customers that are integrated and, and using their monitoring platform more frequently are also more likely to, uh, to be happy and to refer their friends as well. And I see a lot of great questions coming in here in the chat. Um, and the team will be answering these as we go. So please keep the, um, the, the questions coming. And um, if there are any outside of this, when we can, we can follow up at a, at a later date. So we've talked so far about the uh, variety of solutions and differentiating products that you can provide to a homeowner. The 
EV charger, the smart energy devices, the energy storage, and consumption metering. Homeowners now are checking their monitoring platform more and more frequently via their smartphones. So we brought out a new um, monitoring application called My Solar Edge. Within this application, you can monitor your solar, battery, EV charging status, all in one dashboard. It will show you the, the production and the consumption overlaid on each other on the graph, which will help the homeowner manage, and, uh, manage their usage and consumption. It'll monitor the PV production, of course, in that same area and provide you remote access to inverter and battery software and, and controlling of your smart energy devices. So as you can see on the left here, we have the, um, we have the, the platform that illustrates your solar production, your energy status of your battery, your home and the grid. Across the top, we have a variety of different op options for co customers to look at their smart energy devices or their layouts. They can manage and control their EV charger. So if they want to start charging at a specific time because maybe they're about to head out and the car isn't full yet, it was set to charge in the evening, logging into the My Solar Edge app will enable them to change the schedule, cancel it, or tell the, the EV charger to start charging right now. This will be the platform that we roll out all of these additional features to as well. So as the hot water heater arrives, um, and our other lights and switches and relays and outlets start, um, start appearing. This is where they're going to appear and will allow them to manage and control those devices all in one application. You know, I've said a few times that we're building a solution that allows you to build on with your consumers in the future. This is the beginning of the platform for SolarEdge as well. The, the, the Energy Hub solution um, and the current devices attached to it is really just the beginning of this, of this roadmap for SolarEdge. With more products coming in the future, uh, these will all integrate into the same monitoring platform, giving homeowners more stability and more control within the same device. Homeowners are, are progressively more interested in um, a version of a smart home. Um, and SolarEdge is really providing that with flexible solutions, more efficient, more efficient and resilient solutions that are going to power their everyday life, uh, with all of the all of the items that I've I've discussed so far. With SolarEdge and the Energy Up solution, we're going to save time and money on the front end when adding a back battery in the future. By putting the infrastructure in on the front end, there's no need to change out equipment later on when they want to add energy storage. Um, providing you with a more competitive solution um, in the future. We're going to provide homeowners with peace of mind um, that they have a solution that's going to be lasting for the long term and that they're going to be able to manage and control these devices all in one location. So today we've reviewed the Energy Hub Inverter. We've reviewed all of the devices that attach to it the obviously we've talked about solar, EV charging. In the future, we will have um, uh, generator management and control and support. The value in consumption monitoring, which is which is near and dear to my heart, with um, understanding how much a homeowner is using, providing them the power to be able to manage and control their consumption, and add-on features like our smart switches, inline relays that are coming here in the near future as well as the battery add-on. Really, we're starting to see the vast majority of our customers start to purchase the Energy Hub as the baseline solution to, to provide differentiation and that roadmap in the future. The majority of these inverters are actually going out without batteries, because as we see, the majority of customers aren't interested in adding a battery today, but they are very interested in adding these solutions in the future. So, you know, I'd like to open up to further questions. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to uh, review this solution with us today. And um, I think we'll spend a little bit of time here on the, on the Q&A. So John, uh, we can uh, 
maybe do some of this live. So one of the questions that came in over the the chat was, um, what are the warranties like for the EVSE and the inverter and maybe the batteries and the backup interface? Well, thing happy to um, happy to review that. So when we're thinking about the EV charger, the EV charger comes with a five year warranty. Um, the EV charging cable come with, comes with a, a, a limited warranty, but the EV charger itself comes with a five-year warranty as standard. When you compare that to other industry-style products like this, uh, they tend to be in the two to four-year period. So we have a, a solution that is going to differentiate you from that perspective. The Energy Hub inverter comes with a standard 12-year warranty, like all traditional solar edge inverters, and there's an, an opportunity or option to upgrade that to 20 or 25 years, depending on uh, what your customer preference is. Um, our extended warranty price list is a public document. So if you Google SolarEdge extended warranty price list, it will be right there. Um, so, uh, so if customers see value in that, then you can certainly extend it out. The backup interface comes with a 12 year warranty and it is set at 12 years, it is not extendable. Well done, thank you. Uh, there's another question that talks about the uh, AC voltage using uh, to charge the car. So I, I can answer this one. Uh, so yes, the EVSC does use AC voltage to charge the car. It is uh, programmable to from 16 amps all the way up to 40 amps of continual charging. Now, what makes it different than most EVSEs is yes, you can wire to 40 volt outlet and use it exactly like any other EVSE. However, you also can wire it directly to the inverter, saving you breaker space, uh, circuits and, and wiring time. And if you leave it at the factory default 32 amp charging, uh, that means you will only ever pull 32 amps from the grid and then you get the ability of having solar boost mode, which means we can pull an additional eight amps uh, from what the inverter was going to push uh, to the grid and you'll be able to charge at 40 amps, even though it's only uh, programmed as a 32 amp charger. Uh, so that's what makes it a little bit more compelling and different than most. And then also, as, as John described, our warranty is better than most. Thanks, Cameron. Uh, and then it was, I, I think another question came in about, you know, what type of uh, worker person can install the more complicated inverters? Uh, really, we have a, a do you want to cover the online training portal? Sure, absolutely. So um, from a training perspective, SolarEdge has, has um, invested significantly in the training for the Energy Hub solution, including the battery installation and backup interface. So the same um, installers that are installing your electrical right now with your, um, well, on, your on, on, on the inverter side can certainly install this product with the correct training. Um, there is a training um, for, from a technical perspective and a sales perspective. It is modular throughout the, My Sol the, um, the Edge Academy that allows um, your installers to go through and complete it in pieces. Well, this also allows you managing your team to be able to see who has completed that installation training. What we would probably recommend is that everybody who's doing the, um, the Energy Hub installation take and complete that training. Uh, please reach out to your solar edge rep or solar agent salesperson to um, get access to that. If you don't know how to find it, we are happy to um, uh, facilitate getting into the, the Edge Academy. All you really need is a SolarEdge login. So if you already have a monitoring portal login um, on the SolarEdge.com landing page, which I can pull up here in a second. Um, let me show you quickly where that lives. And, uh, and you can log into the, um, I will reshare my screen here when I land on that page. So you should now see our website. And here in the Edge Academy, is uh, the login for our um, learning management system, our LMS. And there's a full technical training in here for the Energy Hub uh, solution. 
Great, thank you. Another question came in. Uh, I have cold climate customers. Do we have any battery agnostic connection for 48 volt VDC battery banks? And uh, so the answer to that question is no. We uh, currently have you know, our solar edge battery coming out soon. And then of course we have one other, we need a high voltage battery. And the reason we really believe in high voltage batteries is because the wiring is just so much easier to do uh, than traditional, you know, 12, 24, 48 volt battery banks. Uh, so that's why we like high voltage batteries. They're much more efficient and it's just 10 gauge wire instead of, you know, two watt cable. And then also part of that question is when will we have the generator input? So in the backup interface, there is already a generator input ready to go. Uh, all you have to do is wire the inverter to the generator input. However, it is locked behind firmware. So you won't be able to operate the generator without specific firmware. Uh, we're currently working to develop that. So you'd have to uh, wait until that is released and we're targeting Q2 for that. Cameron, do you want to review the, the two inverter question? I expect that to be a popular one. Yeah, sure. So uh, are you talking about two inverters and backup or? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So as you know, with the backup interface, we can AC couple up to three inverters. Uh, so you can use a combination of energy hubs. You can use uh, an energy hub with a setup enabled inverter and with a PV only setup enabled inverter. And what that will do is the energy hub will become the grid forming inverter and then everything else will, will follow that. So that is also uh, firmware locked. We're in, we've got about, I don't know, 50 uh, beta installations that uh, we've been practicing on and we've really dialed in the firmware. We expect it to be released, uh, generally available to everybody within the next couple of weeks. So you'll see that out and uh, load it onto Setapp and you'll be able to upgrade any site with, uh, with Setapp and have multiple inverters work in backup. And the application for this, I think is pretty interesting that, you know, maybe there's an most likelihood, this is like where there's an incumbent um, HD wave Setapp inverter that's on the wall already. And you don't have to remove that if you wanted to install um, an energy storage solution. You could leave that in place uh, and we will essentially AC couple with that. Um, it might be worth bringing some of the DC across um, from the, the incumbent inverter to the energy hub inverter. So we do gain all of our efficiencies. You know, we, we value that efficiency of the DC coupling side and, and pulling some DC over um, uh, will, be, will be valuable for, for your customers. So you have flexibility in how you want to do it, or you could replace the inverter and land an energy hub inverter in there instead. It's, it's entirely up to you. Yeah, uh, thank you. That's an awesome comment, John, thank you. Uh, another question came in about uh, the energy hub inverter. Do we allow customers to change the battery settings, uh, time of use windows or self-consumption or backup reserve? Uh, so yes, as the installer right now with a firmware version, if your energy hub inverter has firmware version 4.12, you can enable, as installer, you can enable the ability for the homeowner to change the backup reserve. So if a storm mode is, or storm is coming, then the homeowner can say, oh, I wanna change my backup reserve to 100% for the next three days, just in case uh, my power goes out and they can disregard the TOU setting. Uh, then on top of that, uh, We'll release a new feature and setup coming soon called the uh, storm mode or weather guard, excuse me, weather guard. And uh, basically we'll send a push notification to the homeowner via my solar edge app that says, hey, there's a severe weather event coming in your region. Would you like to change your system to backup only? And again, prioritizing charging the battery, getting ready for any possible grid outages. Uh, and then once the severe weather warning is is over, then we continue the normal programming of, of the battery. Uh, as far as changing TOU modes, sorry, my baby's screaming. Uh, as far as changing TOU modes, you won't be able to do that uh, quite yet. Uh, that is a feature that we're still working on. So right now, TOU or time of use modes are set by the installer. And there's many reasons we do that, but uh, we see that a lot of people want more control over the battery. 
Okay, uh, and then also there's a question about what will the battery chemistry be for the Solar Edge battery? Uh, it is NMC. NMC is uh, what you see in every single EVSC, or excuse me, EV vehicle, every electric vehicle. It is very safe chemistry. It has a very wide temperature range. It's very power dense, which is why we like uh, an MC. And of course, with the solar edge battery, we're passing all safety features and standards that are required, UL 9540A, to make sure that the battery is as safe as possible. And then John, I don't see any more questions in... Oh, um, another question is, will a 60 amp uh, EV charger be available? And uh, as of right now, I don't think we have any plans for increasing the smart EV charger to 60 amps. I think it's 40 amps. So the question there is, does charge auto shut down when charging is complete? So my assumption is that question is when the when the car is full, does it stop? Absolutely. Um, one, one key on this is we want to make sure that the car is set to accept power um, as soon as it's plugged in and, and the car is not set to a schedule. You want one device to have the schedule running. You don't want to have the car set to a schedule and the EV charger set to a schedule, those, are, those, those schedules um, can conflict. So have the car set to charge when plugged in and have your schedule within the solar edge EV charger. Um, as soon as that uh, charging is complete, it will stop charging. Um, or you could start and stop charging from the, um, from the, from the application. So th this, this follow-up question there, Joseph, can the charger be programmed independently from the inverter? Yes, it can. Um, it would be managed through the same application, through the same My Solar Edge application. Um, but you could, uh, you could, even if you had a Solar Edge inverter, if you're not plugging it into the inverter itself and you're plugging it into an outlet, um, you you can program it independently from the inverter, so to speak. But it would be done in the same application. All right, John, uh, how about when will the 10 and the 11.4 kilowatt energy hubs be available? Great question. So we have an exciting roadmap of products coming out. Um, I expect that uh, those higher powered versions to come out later in the year, likely in the latter part of Q3. Um, there's another way to approach these larger systems and that's to take a more modular approach Right, so rather than doing a single larger inverter is to do two smaller inverters, a 3.8 and a 7.6 maybe, um, depending on the customer's storage needs and backup requirement needs, potentially two 7.6 7 kilowatt energy hub inverters. So we're finding that installers are able to, you know, address their entire customer base and fleet by doing um, smaller inverters. One piece that we didn't really talk about on the energy hub side is that we, with a battery installed, we do allow the DC to AC ratio to go up to 200%. Um, and that, that in itself may uh, remove the requirement, certainly for some 10 kilowatt inverters that you can uh, put more DC on that energy hub inverter uh, than you could a traditional um, solar edge HC wave setup inverter. 